Defense, bad. Offense, bad. Special teams, bad. Coaching, bad. Colts get smoked in Cincy today. We're going to touch on all that and more on this, the No Horsing Around podcast. What is going on, Colts Nation and No Horsing Around family? Welcome back to another episode of the No Horsing Around podcast. Uh, the not so instant reaction, reaction to the just ass whooping that was the Cincinnati Bengals winning 34 14 against the Indianapolis Colts today in a massive game with humongous implications for the playoffs. The Colts probably played their worst game of the entire season in all phases, all three phases, including coaching, was just not good. You know, you had the offense that couldn't really get going except for that just strange, right? I think that's the only way you could put it. 14-point burst with about two minutes left. You know, you score the touchdown. You drive down. You score the touchdown on a fourth down to Mo Alley-Cox. Awesome. Then you get the pick six, and you're tied 14, right? But even mixed in there, you have the missed field goal by Matt Gay, the missed extra point by Matt Gay, which is – I mean, Matt Matt Gay's been money all season, one of the best kickers in the NFL. And you kind of had this feeling that it was not going to be that day, right? Then you come out in the second half, and Jake Brennan goes just right down the field again, take you up 21-14, and that was kind of it. Like that was – that was – you kind of looked and go, okay, this is is not going to be a strong day, right? Running game could never get going 13 for 28 from Zach Moss. But I think um, – I'm trying to think who said it. I would love to get credit, but give them credit for it. But, I mean, you look at it, you know, he was a bell cow when we didn't have Jonathan Taylor at the beginning of the season. And since JT had come back and then set again and he's kind of taken over again, it's not been the same. You know, he's not been able to push through that and really produce. Michael Pittman Jr., great day, you know, eight receptions, 95 yards, get the two-point conversion catch. Man, you're not going to find many highlights. You know, you're you're not going to find a lot of highlights if you're looking for them from the Colts. I mean, Zaire got another 14-tackle performance. You know, you had zero sacks on the day. You were averaging like five, five to six over the four-game win streak, and you had zero today. Goose egg. Nada. Ronnie Harrison, great pick six. That was that was a fantastic thing. Continues to show pretty decent um, learning curve when it comes to the linebacker position, having not played it before. And shout out to my boy Adam Raymer, who I work with, who's a huge Bama fan, who kind of gave me a little bit more insight into Ronnie Harrison. So that was that was a cool thing to kind of get a little bit of background, a little bit more background about him. Um, but overall, I mean, just a dud, self-inflicted wounds. You know, it wasn't a good showing by the Colts in a massive game. The only saving grace for you, if you're if you're the Colts, is everybody you needed to lose. If you had won, you would have moved up significantly. They lost. The Jags lost. The Texans lost. You know, the Steelers lost earlier in the week. So you got you got very lucky in regards to that you are still sitting at the seven seed right now, somehow, some way, and you have arguably the biggest game of the season coming up on Saturday in regards to going to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. It's going to be interesting to see. With that one, we'll preview that one probably. Um, you know, T.J. Watt may be out. They're missing uh, uh, their other edge, too, could potentially be out. Two, both of them are in concussion protocol. There's a chance that they miss the game. That would be huge. You're going to be playing, obviously, Mitchell Trubisky. But let's focus on this game. I mean, it was just – yeah, it was abysmal. Abysmal. Uh, There there are no other words, right? Like, there are no other words to talk about. I mean, Jake Browning threw for 275, two touchdowns and a pick. Joe Milton, 79 yards and a touchdown. I mean, they were three for five in the red zone. You were one for three. You had nine penalties for 66 yards. 
You had a fumble when you were driving. I mean, just didn't show up. It was reminiscent a little bit. Um, played a better team, obviously, of Jacksonville from a two years ago. I mean, that's that's what that was. You watching that big game, big game feel, and out of the gate, you just never felt in it. You, you, you didn't. You felt just uh, – I, I got no words, right? But like I said, somehow, some way, Colts are still sitting in the seventh seed. Chance to move up, obviously – potentially by beating the Steelers, but you, you got to win that game. you got the tiebreaker against Houston right now still because you beat them. You don't own it against the Bengals, obviously. I mean, you're just – you need you got some big games coming up. Like, we are we, we talked about it prior on what we thought, like this stretch of games. I think we did a show where we were like predict the last – I did one where it's predict the last little bit here. I mean, you got a Steelers game, must win. You need to win at the Falcons, and you need to win against the Raiders. Okay? And then it's probably shaping up to look like that Texans game in Week 18 is going to be massive. But I digress. Looking at today, there's just nothing good to say. There's nothing good that came out of it. You got dog-walked um, by the Cincinnati Bengals, and now you are really needing to step up. What do y'all think? How bad was it for you? Do you have anything good to say from this game? Or is this one of those ones where bury the game ball, burn the game tape, and move on to next week? Make sure you guys please subscribe, like, share, all those great things. Join the family as you see buzzing above me all the time throughout this. And as always, you guys, I love you, and I know the Colts love you. I'm out.